Yeah, so we, we're gonna have you stand with your back like this. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Take that. Put that on. Is it okay? I'm gonna clip you in. I'm gonna get you uh, some headphones. Just don't move for a second. Head still. I'm gonna do this. Good. The controller's here. Mm -hmm. Now just take a second before you start running and just look around a little bit. Kind of ease yourself in to using your head to look around rather than uh, a droid pad. Don't sway well, too much. Position tracking is no go it's right not now, there, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't that Well, mode. it's crazy when you try. Yeah, yeah, no, no. When you try to do that, I just wanted to try the feeling of this. It gets. It will make you sick very quickly. Very. <laughs> uh, the motion scaling is one to one, right? Yes. I can't say anything about the resolution because. Because I'm nearsighted, so how does it look for you? Everything looks, of course, a little bit blurry, so I can see the pixels. You know, mm -hmm. you want to use the head as much as possible, because otherwise you start getting a little bit sick, dizzy. And it also happens when moving back and forth. Actually, when I do this, because I probably there are some stairs here, so. When I move down and up here, I guess that's it. It actually happens even on my, even if uh, <laughs> I'm on a flat plane. Never mind. It's not the stairs. It's so immersive and believable that when I raise my hand, it doesn't break the immersion. It feels like I'm just invisible. That's why I'm not seeing my hand in front of me. It's pretty cool. Oh, I'm. I'm following a four-legged creature, which I first initially killed, but seems like it's actually helping me out. Yeah. Sorry for <laughs> for that. The uh, stereoscopic uh, 3D on the gun is is crazy. I mean, I have the gun right here now. Here, moving up and down. You see, right here. This is. Here, here is the laser beam going out from the gun, and here is my other hand, basically holding the gun like this right now. I, like this. People. I can't, of course, rise the gun, move around, because I'm not using a, a motion controller. Or, that would be cool, you know, to, to aim from the, from the iron sights or from the scope by rising the gun, actually. Are rising your uh, move, your controller. Can I try to sit down? Yeah, absolutely. Let me just stand right there for a second. I'll okay. Give you a chair. How did you do the test? Wait a second. Oh, I said to the to the AI is waiting for me. I said. So the the chair is just right here. Just there you go. That's the perfect. Oh my god. Good. Just relax a little bit. Take a breather. I wasn't feel so good. That's why I <laughs> I wanted to sit down. But that's a combination of factors, actually. It's both the, the wall uh, uh, virtual reality thing and as well as that, that I'm not seeing clearly. So you went to sleep, eh, little, little boy? Here is the, the four-legged creature that happened the hour before. It's now like sleeping on the ground here. So I'm on my own now. I also never played Doom 3, so I'm sorry if I'm if I'm uh, behaving like a noob. Uh, oh, you can see though, but so I ju can just pretend I'm uh, I'm playing well. <laughs> I have no idea what, what's happening. Was it I'm, I I just went down uh, the stair that I the ladder the ladder. I look down like this and just jump it off. I'm going through a ladder here and I can see it bends a little bit. The graphics, yes. they are uh, distorted a little bit. Part of, yeah, that's actually not the optical distortion. It's, uh, it, it, it's a yeah, when, 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 a, when something is straight, it's right to the peripheral view, you can see the distortion. 
Yeah, that's actually, it, and it's not even so much the head mount. Sorry? It, if you try rendering any game at 110 degree field of view, it's because of the way that it does so rectilinear. So no, no amount of uh, you can ray distortion it. can uh, fix you, that. You can correct for it a bit. It's just it, it, isn't, isn't this correct already? It's reasonably correct. It's just okay. an early version of it. Okay, now that's pretty cool. Because I'm uh, operating a, a cursor on a, on a display here using just my hand. And I can also use the right, right stick, of course, but that's too twitchy. There is a panel here with a, a key. I have to enter some numbers here, but I have no idea what numbers I'm supposed to enter. There is a, a combination, anyway. I'm looking at a corpse. It's just right there. I'm getting attacked by three heads now. <laughs> One left. There we go. Is it running at 60 frames per second? It should be most of should the time. Be. Should be. It could be a. To see if it fixes itself, it might be mechanical. It's more like. Uh, this problem. It's tough to describe. It like, it like trembles a little bit as I move up and down. Slightly. Yeah, it trembles. The tracking might be jittery. Mm -hmm. it might be something related to the sensor. Yeah, yeah. slightly. Uh, I'm stuck. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, are you ready to pull out anyway? Because we've got about 10 minutes. Okay, okay. So this is good, good no, no, timing. You, I was waiting for you to stop me. Oh, no, no, no. You're welcome to... Sorry. Okay. We like to leave people in there until they want to come out. Oh. Welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> It'll take a second to readjust. I will pull out. But... No, no, no. I'm, I'm fine. You just need to, to, Get see, some glasses. to see again. Oh, my God. <laughs> Um, I started out as, I guess, like a garage enthusiast working on projects in my spare time in the garage um, and, you know, trying to build a great head mounted display that I'd really enjoy using. Um, over time, I finally, I, my, what I did and the technology both moved along really well until finally it was possible to make a really nice headset at an affordable price. Uh, most of the other head mounted dis display companies, they're not just targeting, you know, making the best immersive gaming experience uh, like there's a few other head mounted display companies and they make really amazing products but they survive mostly on military research professional right. the, 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 um, those kinds of applications and they're not trying to deliver maybe the best experience they're trying to deliver an experience that matches a certain set of requirements that must be met for those applications um, so by trying some new things and optimizing it for just gaming I think that we've been able to make a lot of the compromises and make the right compromises needed to make a great piece of gaming hardware. Carmack was already working on virtual reality stuff on his own. He had been working with some other head-mounted displays. Uh, he contacted me and asked if he could buy one of my head-mounted displays that I'd been working on. I told him he could just borrow one for free. Um, so he's he's been using that for for, for a while now in his, in his VR demos. Um, I had actually been talking, and I had actually been talking to Valve a little bit, um, and and uh, we brought it up to up to them and showed it off to them. Same thing with Epic, um, same thing with Unity, and they were both really excited when they got to see it as well. Well, I mean that's one of the. It's it's hard to be excited about it until you actually take a look at it. Most people once they try it, they then they get really excited. So you know we've shown it to developers, we've shown it to normal gamers, we've shown it to. Um, people who aren't even gamers and pretty much everyone's taken a look and said, oh wow, this is really great. I'm, I'm sure that this is something people would want. Once they try it out, I think people will like it. And then also I think that really good word of mouth helps. I mean, like we, in our video, we have like people from Valve, we have people from Epic, we have 
um, you know, people from from id software all saying this is great and we think it's great and we like it. And even if somebody hasn't been able to try it for themselves, they, they'll tend to believe people like that. They'll say, oh, well, those people are big gamers and people respect their opinion. So if they say it's good, then it's probably pretty good. Do you see the motion controllers being more suited for the, this kind of virtual experience? I think long-term motion controls are probably going to be much better for this kind of experience. Uh, the reason we're using a gamepad right now is just because it's a proven interface, everyone has one. Uh, we're not trying to redefine control interfaces right now, we're just trying to get the core technology, the head mount with head tracking out to developers, then we think that they're going to be able to find out a lot of, they're going to be able to play around with controls a lot, be that gamepad, keyboard, mouse, motion controllers, full body controllers, whatever that First is. First person shooters are the obvious application for virtual any headsets like this. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean for like real time strategy, you can have it so that you're actually controlling the view of the camera with your heads. You can actually look down and see the entire field and look over here, look over here, um, potentially use a motion controller to move things around or move the map around underneath your hands or something like that. Um, racing, racing titles, flight simulation titles, even third-person games where you know you could have it controlling the camera, so you're still controlling a you know a, a third-person view, but you can actually also look around inside of that world. That could be a really compelling experience, I think. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you.